there! My voice is a little bit hoarse because I'm a horse. <laughs> so this is Pandora Butter. We're gonna talk about Miss Universe. This is just maybe one of the two Miss Universe videos left before we proceed to the new chapter of Roboto Channel. This channel has a new name, as we all know. This is Showbiz and Pageants with Roboto. So expect, uh, you know, some changes. It's not totally changed. We would just add some things to, you know, reinvigorate our channel. <laughs> It's gonna be in Tagalog from now on. The giving of opinions, analysis, sharing stories, talking with some uh, beauty queen material, good looking guys at the same time because we're gonna go to different places and we will find discoveries in the pageant and uh, entertainment world. Diba? So, abangan niyo yan. Especially my fellow Pinoys. Because it would not just be serious business, it would also be having some fun. Yan. But, if we're talking about international pageants like Miss International, Miss World, Miss Universe, then, of course, I want the rest of the world to understand me. So, we would speak in English. And if there are some moments, if there are some uh, parts of the video that would be in Tagalog or in Taglish, then we would put some sub subtitles. Okay, so we're gonna talk about Celeste. What happened? What happened to Celeste? What happened to our representation? What happened to the, uh, you know, the men and women behind Miss Universe Philippines? It's hard to blame Celeste. It should not be her, really. She is just our gorgeous representative. She is just following some orders and directions and suggestions and learnings from the people behind Miss Universe Philippines. So, is that natin. Let's talk about the preliminary competition. I posted this right after the preliminary competition. What went wrong? Ano ba talaga? So number one, isinisisi ang, ano, isinisisi ang, uh, ang gown at ay pa pang mga kasuotan. Including the, the costume. Even if, even though it does not have any bearing sa scoring, still, they consider it as one of the wardrobe malfunctions. <laughs> malfunction. Basically, it did like Darna. It could have been a great costume if someone wears it. If another candidate has been given the task of performing Darna. Because it's not just, you know, showing a costume or wearing a costume. You're supposed to execute it as well, just like swimsuit and the gown. You're supposed to dramatize everything. Put some action, put some movements, put some gestures, facial expression. Don't just wear it. Do it. And there was no Darna. Darna wasn't just an iconic woman. An a Pinay icon. It's a superhero in you know, in the first place. So there's so there should be some superhero. I've already said this. But I would just like to reiterate this, that she should have done something, not really acrobatic, but you know, some, a little pose here and there. Look at Miss USA. Diba? May konting galaw-galaw. And the other candidates. So I think, even though there is no points, we can never ignore the possibility that some judges have been watching it. You see? So they keep on looking for someone who is strong, who is fighting, who is determined to win. Diba? And that would reflect the scores the next day because that would be added informally to their scores. Whether we 
whether it's just an you know, a product of my imagination or maybe a reality, whatever, should have performed better. And once again, it is not Celeste. Of course, she's just following the directions that has been, you know, given to her. because I also train, you know, candidates here in the Philippines. Even before I went to Japan. Diba? So, ganito ka, ganyan, ganyan ka. Okay, magdala ka ng ganito, and then ganun ka pagdating sa unaan, and then mag-emote ka, okay? Ganyan, ganyan, konting, ano, diba? Or konting pose. Ganun. So, hindi ko lang kung bakit nakalimutan yun. Kung bakit hindi naalala, and they're considered top-notch when it comes to handling canvas because they are there. They are under a legit organization that is sending, you know, a Philippine representative to the universe. So thus, they must be on top of everyone. Kaya sabi ko, dami magagaling na trainers in the Philippines, but they are, you know, they are the elite circle of trainers. They shouldn't, they should have known everything. Diba more than us. Pero oh, yun, maraming kulang. The gown, I mean, uh, from swimsuit performance, it was an upgrade. Sa swimsuit performance, because she did it better there. But the people keep on bugging everyone about the gown. Well, of course, I wanted a, a more daring gown. But for me, that's okay. That's, that's just okay. The most important thing is she was able to carry it well. So okay lang yung mga talik-talikot na gano'n, hindi ko hindi barat ulit. Okay lang yun. Sa akin, okay lang yung gown. Hindi okay yung costume. It was very promising. It could, but if there was a great execution, it could have been better. Doon sa mga pictorials, sa mga... mga ganap, activities. Buhos naman, di ba? Talagang... todo, todo bigay. Told me, guy, even, even Celeste, you know, the poutings are there. You know, emo, emo is there. Di pa andun, so dun nilalabas sa mga ganun. I don't know. And okay lang na nilalabas dun because part ng pagsali, although walang points, is para mas maraming mahikahit na fans na sumuporta sa'yo. And nakikita ng judges yun, yung mga photos sila, syempre, hindi tinatina na nalian. Pero dapat, Di nala doon. Sa stage. Di ba? Kasi doon talaga yung labanan. Doon sa preliminary competition. And, yun, nakulangan ako. And marami nakulangan. Pero marami rin. Swap na swap lang daw. Maraming nagustuhan nito. Yun, so kanya-kanya nga tayo. Nang pananaw. But, as we all know, hindi siya nakapasok sa semifinals. And maybe that's one of the culprits. Her average performance during the preliminary competition. Hindi na pregusa pa ng ganda. Talagang maganda. Kaya na sabi ko, if the Miss Universe organization would choose one to be the face of the pageant, then it's. Absolutely Celeste, or maybe she's one of the top five, if they're gonna choose five. But for me, I think she's, uh, she's the most beautiful there. Yung kahit anong ayos pwede, kahit anong makeup pwede. Halos walang angulong pangit siya. Number two is what the judges are looking for what the organization is looking for and they're looking for a transformational leader so it should not only reflect on their answers during the interview because feel ko naman lahat magagaling lahat may mga kanya-kanyang ibibigay sila also could do well in conversations and interviews and we saw that that she has demonstrated progress in her communication skills from her Miss Earth days. 
Diba, it's just a maybe. She wasn't oh so strong when she came in. Maybe, it's just, let's just maybe. It's, all we have are, you know, assumptions, guessings, etc., etc., etc. Because wala naman nakakita. Behind closed doors. So, puro tayo chismisan, puro tayo analysis. Lahat tayo, diba? So, I think, maybe, uh, kasi if the judge is really oriented about the transformational leader, isa sa mga bintahe din is yung, ano, yung talas ang pananalita mo. Ipong bossy at the same time is charming. Diba? Hindi pong amor powers ang dating. <laughs> na, para yung peg, pero, bukod sa may sense ang kanyang sinasabi, is my power, my strength, yung, yung the manner she expresses her thoughts. Diba? So, hindi pwede alam niya, alam niya siyempre doon because they're looking for a leader, a strong leader at that. So, baka, baka, once again, baka, baka, so, baka, soft ulit yung dating niya lang, kahit pa, ang ganda-ganda ng suot niya. Iyon. Eh, Dominican Republic, USA, mukhang intimidating pagpasok pa lang sa ano, pagpasok pa lang sa bulwagan ng mga judges, sa closer interview. So, ako kay Celeste, ginaya ko yung ano niya, yung shoot niya. Binuksan niya malaking pinto. <laughs> I think both video shoot. So, sort of that. Did you see that? Dapat gano'n ang entrada niya. <laughs> so, char, char lang mo. <laughs> Pero yun, I think malaki na gagawa niya. So, yun. <laughs> Asa na ba tayo? Where are we now? Okay, let's have my magic book. My top 16 was here, and I got my top 3. I got my top 3 compared to other, you know, to some prominent pageant websites or vloggers. We correctly identified the three suspects. <laughs> so I got it right. But we're gonna talk about that for our Miss Universe uh, review. That would come out right after this with my friend. Imagine we have a special guest. Oh my god. Okay, so let's have something in here. I jotted down some notes. So yeah, maybe in the way she gave her interview was a little bit maybe uncomfortable. Hula hula lata, maybe uncomfortable. Maybe she was not feeling well. Maybe Somebody said that she was feeling cold. May mga ganun chismax. Or maybe she, she, she didn't project an aura of confidence during that time. You know what I mean? Eh, alam mo naman mga ano. Mga strong, mga palaban sa interview. Wasi-wasa ng mga kamay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So maybe they didn't see the transformative or transformational leadership in Celeste during the interview. Or let's just say that she had a good interview. Maybe hindi kasama sa mga top 10 best, maybe average, in the middle. Na pwedeng pwedeng pumasok talaga sa top 16. And then i-add nila ngayon yung performance, yung transformational leader qualities on stage naman ngayon. Through the gown and swimsuit competitions. So you see, kung gidalingan niya ron, kung okay lang score niya dito, pero ang score niya doon is so-so din ang average, hindi ka makakapasok. Eh kung super galing na agad, top 3, top 5 na talaga agad dyan sa overall ranking because lumalaban talaga. Hindi naman sobrang arte. Let's not exaggerate things. I'm not getting overboard by this one, but I think she should have done better and I think she could do it. Pero yun nga lang, feel ko yan na, Feel ko na yun, sinusunod yung gusto ng trainers. Yeah, everyone does it. Everyone follows their trainers. Look at Dominican Republic. <laughs> Namamanok na si... Si Anne. <laughs> Sorry kung naduduro ko kayo. <laughs> Nakakalimot ako. <laughs> Asa na tayo. Dominican Republic, she's my, my number one bet. She could have been the, Miss, the new Miss Universe. Had she changed her style? You know, the strength 
the power, the leader, you know, the leadership qualities that we saw during the preliminary, preliminary competitions are gone. So maybe that her coaches have told her to tame it down. Okay, so let them do this and do that on stage. Now, just let your arms down. So yun ang niya, ganun ganun lang siya. Diba? Eh, kung ginawa pa rin yung astig niyang ano sa ano. Well, I don't think so. Yung mga ganun ganun, tapos masagot siya, iba. Tapos medyo taas ulit yung hair. That would, you know, she would look more queenly. Don't you agree? Just imagine that. She's wearing a, a stylized bun. Mahal na medyo nakataas. She would look taller. And then she would put her arms here again. Diba? That should exude so much confidence during that night. Alamang siya yung manalo. Alright, so the transformative leadership qualities are very important. That's why dapat, ano na to, the new Miss Universe, the new, or the Miss Universe Philippines organization should be on a lookout for that kind of candidate. Kahit hindi masyadong gagandahan. So, you know, transformative leadership qualities, uh, average preliminary performance, you know what else? Uh, they keep on saying authenticity, that she wouldn't trade authenticity for the crown. Well, you know what? I respect that. Or I respect the organization because I know it's a team decision, it's a team goal. Now, don't, don't sacrifice authenticity. But I think authenticity shouldn't be an issue here. Because it's a game. It's a... It's a performance-based competition. Even in singing. Diba? Eh kung ganito kakasweet. Pero, feel mo mas mananalo ka pag medyo nag-ano ka eh. Tipong R&B na talagang tipong powerful na tipong para lang naglalamo ng mic, ganun. So it would change. So even if you look like this, but if you sing, I never know! You see? So she's not the authentic person that she is anymore. She relegated it to the background and perform with another personality, a stronger one. In in sports, in basketball, in in soccer. Kailan rough ng konte? Kailan marunong kami sa di ba? Umeksena para makapasok ka, para makalusot ka, and then eventually makashoot ka. You know what I mean? So hindi pa yung magaling ka lang magshoot. Okay. No comparative sa beauty pageant, hindi kinakailangan maganda ka lang na nakasmile ka lang. Kailangan lumaban ka. Diba? That's my take. Na, don't make this authenticity an issue here. Don't include that authenticity here. Or forget your authenticity first and show it sa mga, sa, you know, in some events. In, in the, in the gala night. In, in the dinner, for example, or some special activities. Be authentic. Be who you are. When the competition starts, do something. Diba? So adapt, adapt ng konti, adjust, adjust ng konti. When you're a singer and you try to, to get some vocal techniques from Whitney or from Mariah, because that's the piece and the kind of voice or vocal performance that usually win, then do it. And in pageants, it's also like that. It should not affect the real you because it's a competition. If it's not competition, then, then be you. Just be you. Just be yourself. Do whatever you want to do. But yeah, the bottom line is, forget first about authenticity when you are competing. Be competitive. Put some extra powers. Learn new techniques. And you will do better. And then after the competition, you can go back to yourself. For me, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. I would like to read this nice post from... Pageant expert, Tito Norman. I had an interview with Tito Norman two years ago. If you haven't watched it, then please. So this is it. Let me read it to you because it would motivate the Miss Universe Philippines as they look for the new Miss Philippines or Miss Universe Philippines. Where is that? Where are you, Tito Norman? Okay, Naso Sula. So here's what he said. Looking for the transformational Filipina. Hashtag transformational Filipina. Will it not be too academic to find a transformational leader in pageantry? But 
getting salient points from the dictates of this leadership concept should give us a good starting point in looking for Miss Universe Philippines 2023. Who will be our transformational Filipina in El Salvador by November, December this year? We should seek for someone who is smart enough to get her creative juices or that of others going. She is an agent. She is an agent of change in progress, if you will. She should ideally be involved in an ongoing project where people take inspiration from her words of wisdom or participation. She also has to foster unity among them. You can call it an advocacy or an active part in a charity or non-governmental organization, but she needs to show more than lip service in her involvement and the passion to get her hands on touch to the same. So are we ready to tread carefully on that newly constructed road to Miss Universe success? Hmm. I guess the hard part is looking for the best benchmark. But if Miss Universe Philippines scouts deep enough, there may already be a couple of previous joiners who fit the bill. We can take our cues or we can take cues from the likes of Pauline Amelix. She's my top choice in, in 2020. 2021, I think. Julia Sobier. <laughs> and she has developed her personality now. It's just more beautiful as well. Or even Vanessa Caro and Genesis La Fuga to some extent. Ayun. So, Pinoy's, maybe you have some ideas of who should join Miss Universe Philippines this year. We're going to talk about that in my uh, forthcoming vlog. So, stand by lang kayo. <laughs> At pagchismisan natin yan. Okay, thank you Dito Norman. So that's it. Maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. I don't know if you have learned a thing or two or if you have understood something. <laughs> but that's my take. We love Celeste. Don't get me wrong, I love Celeste. With the not-so-powerful performance, I still included her in my top five. So this is my list. And for those who haven't watched my, my final forecast, the title is Top 16, and my last two standing. Ayun. I put Philippines into my Magic 5 because I have, or I had high hopes for her. Still, hindi na talaga nabigyan ng emote. And for those who are telling na, tama na yung, yung mukha niya, ganun lang, ganun lang. No, this, ako, ako nakulangan ako ng konti. There should be some emotions. There should be some changes in the face, in the mood. You know, the poutings here and there doesn't, you know, wouldn't make her less of a winner. In fact, makakadagdag to. I think so. Yun. Personal take ko lang, ha. Huwag kayong, uh, ano, sumar kanya-kanya tayo. And, yun, ginagalan ko yung opinion. I respect yours. And then I saw the dress that she was supposed to wear during the finals. Ang ganda. Kung yun ang sinuot niya, dagdag points. Ang ganda. And then, nakataas ang hair. Yun. Medyo tataas siya ng konti doon. And then, konting... Kasi ang ganda-ganda pag tumatach yung eyebrows niya, hindi siya nagmumukhang, she still looks sophisticated, hindi siya nagmumukhang villainous. Hindi, walang ganong aura. So dapat, yun ang binigay nila. Because, bagay na bagay sa kanya. At the same time, she would look more like a leader when she wear the hair and the kind of outfit, a dress, gown. May mga ilang ano pa dito. Let me read some comments from the viewers. From Sophie, 26, communication skills and advocacy are one of the weakness of Celeste. I heard that closed story interview scores highest, about 50%. And I heard also that during her interview, she was a little bit cold. So I that figure why she lost big time. Also blame it to her handlers and Miss Universe Philippines organizers. Another thing or another comment. So if you have your own opinions or other things, that you consider as the reasons why Celeste didn't make it to the semi-finals round, comment lang kayo sa baba. 
So, whether nakapagbigay siya ng magandang sagot or hindi, whether hindi siya nakapasok or hindi, Celeste will remain Celeste, one of our best representatives to Miss Universe. That's it. Thank you very much. This is your friend Roboto and see you again. Thank you.